Okay, so if you have already been checking out the basic example and you understand how everything here works, then this video is not really for you. I'm going to go over to how the interface is interacting with all the other actors in the scene. I'm going to go through all of this. So if you know how it works, if you open that up and you know how it works, then there's no point in watching this video. Otherwise, keep watching. So apart from the notepads, and these are notepads, this is all the same blueprint, and this is this blue, uh, this one, notepad, so PolySP notepad. Apart from the notepads uh, and those pads, all the logic is inside the character blueprint. We got here a character blueprint. So we're going to start with that. Let's open up our character blueprint. So when you open it up, let me just stretch this up. When you open it up, there's a little message here for you if you want to read through it. And you have your functions here that are available from the plugin. So check that out. Uh, we got the get loaded patch function, which will give you information about the currently loaded patch. Is polyphony, samples, patch name, etc. I don't know if I mentioned about polyphony, but if you don't know what polyphony means, a polyphony is basically how many keys, how many notes you can play at the same time. Okay, so it's a bit like concurrency inside of Unreal Engine. So um, then you got the get patch sample, this little function here, where you have to input a MIDI pitch. So it's a note, so every note has a, a number for a MIDI pitch from C minus 2 to the 8 octave. And uh, velocity, I mean, as soon as you give it a MIDI pitch and velocity, you'll have information here. This is just me breaking the structs here. Okay, guys? So breaking it. You'll have information about the sample that is associated with that. And the note itself, the requested note, which is whatever pitch you place in there. Uh, then we got the load patch. And as you've seen in previous videos, this will allow you to lower the patch in real t uh, during gameplay. And uh, which also brings the samples and the patch information. And of course, it returns false. It returns false if uh, the patch could not be found, if it's not in the library, if you give it a different name or something like that. And then you got the note on and out of uh, events. We've looked through that, right? So right here, I just have movement inputs. And this is the typical movement input that you would use for a character blueprint. It's just move forward, move right turn with the mouse that I'm turning with the mouse right there so basic stuff right there nothing more uh, we also have these variables that we can get from the, the, the sampler so the attack the release and we can set them as well and down here uh, what I have first let's look at this event it's uh, called on patch loaded so if I after I add the component if I select it and I scroll all the way down here let me open this up a little more scroll the way down here I see on patch loaded if it will have a plus when you uh, press the plus it will create this little note here that you can use and all I'm doing in this example is just I've breaked the structure and then I'm append using an append node uh, to a string so if you write append you get an append node and I'm placing in there new patch loaded patch name polyphony and how many samples it has so I'm counting the length and giving you that that's what's happening there every time a patch is loaded so up here we have the interface events I'm just using interface events later on in, in other videos I'm going to show you how you can use MIDI to trigger the notes as well but for this example the, the one that ships with uh, in the marketplace uh, I use an interface okay so what's happening here? I got a note on and a note off. And these two guys are just uh, going to give me the note and the octave. Okay? Note and octave. So I use a get note. And if you say get note, you see that you have all these functions from the musical note functions. And if you want to see all of them, you can look for musical note functions. It's around here somewhere. There we are. Uh, musical note functions okay so you got all these functions that you can use and to to play around with notes and I'm getting a um, the struct for it 
and I'm just taking the MIDI pitch because that's all I'm, I'm really interested in so that I can send in a note on event. Well, where is this note on event going to? Uh, coming from actually because this is an event. What's triggering this event? Well, what's tr this is a, a interface event and if I open it up you can see that I have three events here in my interface and if I go to class settings notice that I've, I am implementing this interface. So if I press this guy here and it'll open up my interface. Where is this interface? You may ask. It's that interface, okay, inside the BP, inside the basic example. And all I have there is three functions, note on, right, which takes a note octave struct and, and an integer for velocity. I got a note off, note octave struct, just that's all it takes. I don't need velocity to turn off a note. And I got load patch, which takes the, the name, the attack, and the release for the, the patch that we're about to load. And then what triggers this is the actually the notepad and the patch pad. So the notepad, as you've seen in the map, are all these notes here spread out through the map. So let's open that up. Let's see what's in what's is inside here. Ah, uh, I didn't notice. Okay, right, this screen. Okie dokie. Okay, so if I go first to my viewport, you can see that I have in here, I have a plane, which is that white uh, square down there. I have the text render, uh, which is a text render for the note. You can see that it's C3 at the moment and the velocity text, which is a bit smaller down there. And I also have a box collision right there. Okay, so every time someone goes on that box, it will trigger something. It will trigger on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. And those guys are down here. On the construction script, what I'm doing is very simple. I created a a note octave variable which uh, from there I got a note and an octave and I'm using a format text to put the note and the octave inside that text render and then I'm doing the same for velocity and I'm setting the text on the construction script so that when you go into details and you change it, it changes in real time inside the game. On begin play all I'm doing here is setting up a dynamic <coughs> Pardon, a dynamic material instance and saving the variable so that later on I can change the material instance. The material instance that we have, it's a very a fairly simple one. So if I just open up here in my materials, I got the material right here. Very simple material. Okay. It just has a vector parameter, right? So if you write down vector parameter, that's what's going to happen. And it's called color right that's the material that's the master material and then I have two instances two different instances there that I use for two uh, for all, the all example so you can see down here I'll use that material instance I'll grab that I'll set that vector parameter value uh, using the name that we just show, saw for color so this is when on begin overlap you can see and the other color is for end overlap. So the first thing I'm, I'm checking is does the other actor, right, that just touched the collision box implement that interface? And he does. We, we saw that he does implement that interface. It's right there. So if it does, we can move on. And from that actor pin, I'm pulling a pin and then I'm calling a note on note on from the character interface, right? That's the character interface, that's the interface we were talking about, and I'm calling a note on message, which in turn is going to send a message to our character blueprint here, right? It's gonna send this message to it. And that message says note on, on uh, once I get out of the pad, it's a note off, okay? So pretty straightforward, that's how it works with, with uh, how I'm doing it with the interface. So all we have here is these two variables. The patch, 
pad is not very different. So if I open up the patch pad, you'll see that it's basically the same thing. We got set text with a patch attack and release, right? In the viewport, I got basically the same thing, just a different size. Uh, also a box here, a uh, box collision. And doing the same thing with the dynamic instance, doing the same thing to check if it implements the interface. And here, all I do is load the patch on begin of um, overlap, not on end overlap, right? Changing the color there. That's all, all there is. And then, of course, inside the character blueprint, we receive those events and we process them. So load patch for the mod, load patch here with the information that we received. Note off, note on. Okay, I hope I wasn't too fast uh, uh, talking, uh, saying this. Leave something in the comments if you if you need a better explanation about this or if you're having trouble with interfaces or whatnot. Okay, our character is basically is just. Uh, you can see here it's just static meshes. I just added a cube and then another cube, okay, and a sphere. You can call it add and all that. And I put it inside the mesh. And of course, added the camera boom and all that good stuff. Right? So that's it. That's it for the project files, guys. Um, I'll add some use cases as I can. Uh, later on, I'll add some other videos as I can. Uh, where you can use these uh, active component and I'll show you some of the other stuff that I'm building later on as well. So guys, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.